I am really busy this week. I haven't really prepared a very professional presentation, but I wanted to speak to I wanted to speak to you the fact that solar has become so much more affordable and a lot of people don't know that. I have a module out there that in 2008 would probably cost about $2,000 and now it costs about 320 shipped to the cookies here. So that's a fantastic decrease in price that we probably can't find any other product that's gone down that much. And the efficiency of them for the area has gone up significantly. So take home message is um, we're pretty much at grid parity here in terms of cost. You just pay it forward. We're at grid parity pretty much right now and let's go out 25 years at the end of its warranty period and we are cost savings. So there's a significant, um, there's gonna be a significant benefit in the future as you, this solar module continues to put out power and our inflation and our dollars that we spend on our utilities goes, gets more and more, an average of what, two to three percent a year increase in price. Not to diss the utilities, um, the most efficient way to mount solar and use solar is like this is on, um, this is both solar hot water and solar electric. That's the NACUSP veterinary clinic. The solar hot water was more cost effective in 2008 and 9 when National Resources Canada had a rebate program and now I don't encourage anybody to do solar hot water because we all have hot water heaters or electric around here. It's much more energy and cost effective I mean to just go direct with photovoltaic, heat your water with electricity. Um, if you're on gas as a hot water heating method, you want to get off fossil fuel, it's a great idea. Or if you're in a cabin and you want to add a hot water heater. But so photovoltaic and grid tied photovoltaic. So there's off grid and there's grid tied. And off grid means you got batteries and you're going to run a generator in this part of the world. I live off grid by choice. We have the BC hydroelectric lines to our house but it's disconnected. But we do have to run a generator in the winter months. And we don't use a lot of energy, so that doesn't mean very much. We don't run a lot, a lot less than driving vehicles around. <laughs> um, but grid-tied or grid-connected or grid-interconnected, there's lots of different ways to say it, consists of solar modules on, the, on a roof or on a ground-mounted array coming, carrying the current to a inverter, which is a piece of electronics hardware that's about the same size as an electrical panel in a house. Main electrical panel, you know, you're with the breakers, and it usually resides near the electrical panel in the house, ideally, and that changes from direct current, which is like a battery current in a car, positive and negative, turns it into the alternating current, the switching current that we use in our wall plugs, this machinery is using here, and it travels through your house distributed loads panel, your, your main panel. You use the power if you need to, and the utilities may, they all accept it because they're required to by the BC Utilities Commission to accept extra power to move through the back, through your main panel, out through your meter, and onto the power lines and your solar electricity during the day will go to the neighbors <laughs> and to the neighborhood. Um, the house that we're working on right now and Shore Acres, and conveniently enough, the house that's, that's just uh, two, two lots away are putting a lot of power into the neighborhood. They will be, well, they will be and they are putting a lot of power in the neighborhood. So everybody in that neighborhood can be really proud on a sunny day of their neighbors providing them with you know, solar power. But that's how grid connected solar works. It's uh, the battery is the distribution of the neighborhood in the utility grid. So does that run your meter down? 
Yeah, although what, how it works functionally for you to get credit is the meters are both ways. They read both directions. And when Fortis or Nelson Hydro or BC Hydro know that you have, you know, you've been inter entered into an interconnection agreement. And this is a little agreement that you have. They want to make sure in their engineering department that you have equipment that's safe, that shuts down when the uh, utility goes down, so you don't have power during outages. Is because if you did, the lineman out on the road fixing your, your supply could get shot lethally. So it turns off when automatically. So, um, but they do have an agreement. They want to make sure the equipment's all safe. And the engineer looks at it and they say, sure. They also want to make sure that it's not inappropriately large because they don't want to have to deal with an uncomfortable situation of where they owe you money. And a lot of them won't pay you, it's net zero. So there's uh, um, usually there's an anniversary date. Ideally for the customer, the anniversary date somewhere in the spring because in the summer you build up and then in the winter you use it, use your bank account. Okay, one minute, thanks. So that, um, that's called annual net metering and that's grid interactive. And that's a very simple, uh, it's a very simple application with BC Hydro, it's a little more um, complex with Fortis and Nelson Hydro. But um, basically, you know, once they get the inspection report that the project is complying with BC Safety Authority, they will then do the accounting, change the, change the meter if necessary, but more likely it's just a matter of changing how they read the meter. They look for how much you've sold back. So the take home message from this little presentation is that solar's gotten really affordable you pay it forward, you can use, if solar is mounted on your roof, you can get homeowner mortgage rates. If you already have a mortgage, you can add to it. So if you do need to borrow money to do it, it's at a lower interest than if it was just a car or a business loan. So 3.75, something like that. So solar is pretty practical. Um, right now it's at about parity and in the future it's bound to be less expensive unless the utilities somehow make their rates less. <laughs> they are for a year. One year we're going to go down 1% and then we're going to go up to 6% increase in three years of BC Hydro. So I'm sure that will reflect in Fortis too. And I'm not sure. Nelson Hydro is cheaper. It, it's still below cost. You can still get cheaper at Nelson Hydro I think than doing solar. But it's bound to go up. But Nelson Hydro is a special discounted market, you have very cheap power down here. Any questions? What are we looking at for a price of one solar panel? Well, the price of one solar panel that I've got out there is like $320. Um, it's about a dollar a watt, but installed on a roof, you should figure around 225 to 250 a watt per watt. So. A rough estimate here is one watt makes one kilowatt hour in a year. One for, one for one. Thank you.